Hi, and welcome to the face machine. We're going to be demonstrating today how quickly we can rig a face using the face machine widget system. So I'm going to add one of those widgets to my scene right now. And I'm just going to be going through this pretty quickly to show off just how much you can get done in under 10 minutes with the face machine. So as you can see here, our widget includes a number of splines which mirror sort of the influence areas that we're going to want to control on the face with our animation system. And they're not quite in the right positions yet, so I'm going to be using the face machine's built-in features to position them where I want them to be. All right, so here I've got an eye widget that I'm going to move around. You notice that everything in the face machine is auto-mirroring. You can turn that off or mirror the other direction, but auto-mirroring is on by default to save you time. The first thing I'm going to do is move this, start positioning the eyes. They're actually pretty good there. I'm going to position the mouth a little bit. It needs to be wider, clearly, and set in more deeply. The idea that I'm going for is I'm going to try to make it so that these splines line up along the curves where our face would naturally be deforming. And that's going to be different on every face. You're going to have quite a bit of detail in ways of adjusting this. Here I've got a chin widget. I'm going to need to broaden that for this character's chin. Down here, a neck widget, which is going to define the crease between the chin and the neck. Get that into place. And now, once I've got a few of those in position, I'm going to start turning on my lower level widgets, which are going to give me an even greater level of detail and control over where those splines line up. So up here, I've got a control here that's going to show me the forehead. I'm going to need to make some of these brow lines go up high across the brow. Stretch this out, and you can see here that we're sort of ringing the areas which are going to naturally deform on a face with these splines. Pull these out a little bit. Not all of these need to be totally accurate, although, of course, the ones in the levels of highest detail and deformation should be closest to where you want the edge loops of your mesh running. Here we go. That looks pretty good. Another one hidden in here. I'm going to try to line up as much of this as possible with existing geometry. As you can see here, We've got loops that line up reasonably well with these edge loops. They're not going to hit every single face, but a lot of them are going to be close enough to make the deformations look very good. Move my eyelids into position. Move some of these. I want to be able to see these splines and where they're going to be running across the face. A lot of these are looking pretty good. You can see that they're clearly going to line up well with the geometry on this face. Inside of the eyeball here, I'm going to need to position the eyelid markers so that the system will know where to track the center of your pupil for your character. Back outside, let's look at the nose here. We can see we've got splines that wrap along the inside of the nose and come back up along the nasal labial fold. We're going to want to line those up pretty well. Looking good. Down here in the lips, I'm going to be as accurate as I can be because the mouth is one of the most important areas in the face for deformations. We're going to want to try to make these as close to perfect as we can. We're going to come in here and line these up so we have splines running along the inside and center of the mouth. And naturally, it's going to take a few times to get used to this type of interface, but we find that once someone gets the basic idea of positioning these widgets down, becomes a very fast process for rigging. See, so yeah, it's lining up pretty nicely with our lips. It's looking good. That's too far out, obviously. We can see the spline floating in space, so we're going to want to push that back in a little bit. 
get all those so that they line up as close to the skin as possible. Inside here we've got a little cheek widget which we're going to want to get in line. Once we've got that, that's the majority of the widgets on the face machine. So let's just check the corners of the mouth. That's one area where you can always have, you know, finer detail. And it's nice to make sure that these line up as closely as possible. That looks pretty good. Very nice. And one more to make sure we get the nasal labial folds curving around the right part of the face out here. So you want to mirror those edge loops that you've modeled in there. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's rig this and see how it turns out. Oh, uh, I forgot one step. Um, you're going to want to define now your face meshes. Um, so what that means is that we're going to select the various objects that make up the modeled surface of the head and the eyes and the teeth and the tongue if you've got it. And we're going to tell the face machine which parts of the rig that's going to be relating to. So I'm going to select the mesh of the head and tell it to define face mesh creates a nice little group over here, a nice little selection set so we can remove that if we need to. Then take the upper teeth, define those, the lower teeth, define those, left eye, right eye, and we don't have a tongue in this case so that's all we're going to need to do. So now I'm just going to go right ahead and rig and let's see what's going to happen. Okay, so here's our rigged face. Let's take a look at what we got. As you can see, I can just start grabbing controls and pulling on them. And that right there is the face machine. So in under 10 minutes, I've got us a character which is rigged and ready to be animated.